All righty, well, good Sunday morning to everyone this beautiful Lord's Day. Uh, he has blessed us with, and we have an opportunity to be in the presence of God again on this Lord's Day, uh, even though we're having to do things remotely this morning. And I appreciate your patience and, uh, and understanding, and we're living in a different day and, and a different time, and a lot of hard decisions have to be made. But thank God for a way to still get the gospel out. Thank God for a way to still reach people. You can still be in church this morning. Even though you're not in the church building, uh, you can still be in the presence of God today. And so we welcome you into our service this morning uh, here on this uh, uh, Christmas time. This, uh, we're we're right, on the, right on the eve of Christmas here, very close. And, and it's a beautiful time. And, and God's still God, and, and He hasn't changed in any form or any manner. So I hope uh, you all at home have got your Bible, you've got your uh, voice all <coughs> cleared out, and we're going to sing some songs together. And we're going to sing a few of these Christmas songs. This one this morning that we want to sing first, you don't find in our songbook. But it is a wonderful Christmas song. And it is Beautiful Star of Bethlehem. So let's join together and sing that song. You'll have the words at home this morning. And so let's sing together a Beautiful Star of Bethlehem. Beautiful star of Bethlehem Shining afar through shadows dim Giving a light to those who long have gone Guiding the wise men on their way Unto the place where Jesus lay Beautiful star of Bethlehem Shine on star of Bethlehem shine upon us until the glory dawn oh, give us a light to light the way unto the land of perfect day beautiful star of Bethlehem shine on Beautiful star, the hope of light, guiding the pilgrim through the night, over the mountains till the break of dawn. Into the light of perfect day, it will give out a lovely ray. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine upon us until the glory dawn. Oh, give us a light to light the way into the land of perfect day. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine upon us until the glory dawn. Give us a light to light the way unto the land of perfect day. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Well, amen. I hope you sang this morning. I'm going to preach a little bit about Bethlehem uh, after a while here in just a little bit. So I hope you sang this uh, great song this morning. Well, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer uh, today. I do want you to pray for the family of uh, Alice Boring. Alice uh, went home to be with the Lord yesterday morning, early yesterday morning. And Alice, a dear saint of God, and uh, uh, 90, right at 90 years old, and uh, may have may been 90, I'm not for sure of the age, but, but lived a long, good life, and God had blessed her, and, and she had been faithful uh, to this church for many years, as long as her health allowed her to. But today, she's in the presence of the Lord, so pray for her family, her sister Estelle and her other sisters, and remember this family in your prayers today, uh, and we'll be having services for her this week, so you pray for the boring family. Today, also pray for the Weichel family, Brother Stan Weichel. Uh, lost his wife yesterday, 
uh, Donna Weichel passed away. So let's remember the Weichel family in, uh, in, in your prayers today as well. Pray for, the, pray for folks that are sick. Uh, this, COVID, uh, this COVID pandemic has really hit our area pretty tough here recently. And we want to just pray for families undergoing this and families within our church that's suffering from this today. We want to pray for their healing and for their health. And uh, let's lift each other up today with our prayers and with our encouragement and with help. How, how we just need to pray for one another and uh, ask for God's guidance and God to help us in this time. Pray for our nation, our government. Uh, pray for people in positions to make decisions. A lot of decisions have to be made, and we must make the right ones, and we just pray that God will help us with that as well. And then we want to thank God for His grace and mercy. Thank God for watch care, for, for watching over us and taking care of us, and, and things could be a lot worse than they are, and God is watching over and healing and helping. Let's pray for lost people, how people need to be saved today. Let's pray for this, even this service that's going out over the live stream that maybe somebody will hear the message today and be saved from their sin. And uh, we just want to praise God. Uh, when the world's forgetting God, it's time that we, the children of God, Praise God. So let's look to the Lord in prayer and let's ask for God's strength today and His help. Our Father, which art in heaven, O God, as we gather once again on this Lord's day, we thank you, God, that you've given us another opportunity, Father, to gather together, Lord, as believers and, Father, to worship you on this Lord's day. We thank you, God, for the beautiful day you set before us and for health and for strength. And, Lord, we just ask you, God, to guide us and lead us, Lord, in every step that we must go and decisions that we must make. Heavenly Father, we ask you, Lord, to help us May your strength abide upon us, Lord, and we need wisdom in the time of trouble. We need strength, Father, in the day of evilness, Father, as evilness is so widely abounded, but God, grace is still sufficient. And Lord, where, where, where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. And so, Father, help us. We pray for lost people today. God, that they might hear the word of God and be saved. I thank you, Lord, for these, Father, that are listening today to the word of God and pray for those, Lord, through the live stream and those here. We ask you, God, to help us, Lord, uh, Father, to turn our attention just for a few moments away from the world and upon the word of God. Be thankful for the precious word of God that's with us, whether we're in the house of God or whether we're in our own house. Uh, Lord, you've promised to be wherever we are and to meet our our need, God, wherever we are. So, Father, forgive us of our sins of doubt. Forgive us, Father, of our sins of fear. And, Lord, lead us, God, into the way that you would have us, Lord, to go today. We pray for our people. We pray for our people in our church, Lord, that are suffering from COVID disease today. We ask you, Lord, to heal them, Father, and give them strength. And others, Father, that you have healed and brought through. We thank you, Lord, for that. Pray for these that are in serious condition today, especially, God, if they're lost. Lord, we pray that you'll give them, Father, another day, another opportunity, Lord, to be saved. Pray for these families that's lost their loved ones, Lord, uh, today. We pray for Estella Falbo and her family, Lord, and the family of Alice Boring, that you'll comfort them, God, in this time of loss. And Lord, we pray for the Weichel family this morning. That you'll bring a peace to them, God, and help. You told us you was the God of all comfort who comforted us in all our tribulation. And Lord, we believe that today. We pray, Father, for our nation, our, our president. Uh, we ask you, Lord, there's so much going on in our world. We ask you, first of all, God, to forgive our nation of their sin. Lord, how they turn their back on God and will wake them up, Lord, that they might see a need of Christ. And Lord, as we celebrate Christmas, may we celebrate it with Christ. Lord, so many people are going to celebrate without Christ. Lord, if they don't, Lord, let them celebrate Christmas with Christ right in the middle. Lord, help us, Father, to convey that message and help people today to be faithful, Lord, to that message. Thank you, God, for this place of refuge. Thank you, God, for this day, uh, Lord, that we can uh, preach the word and, and, Lord, people can hear the word. And we thank you for technology and for those that are here helping us with these things. Oh, dear God, help us, Lord, how we need your strength and comfort today. Bless the message today. Thank you for Pastor Mays and his family being here, for him being here today, helping us, Lord, with the music. And God, does, it takes a lot of people to work. And we just thank you for faithful people. Now, Lord, give us a good day. Give us a good day at your table. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, being able just to ask the Lord's help today. Well, as things are, you got to listen to me sing. So, <clears throat> I hope that don't upset your day. I hope it makes you glad. Here's, no, here's a Christmas song we're going to sing. Uh, God rest ye merry gentlemen. So I'm going to try to sing it. 
Let's sing. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. From God our Heavenly Father a blessed angel came And unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same How that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy Oh, tidings of comfort and joy and when they came to Bethlehem, where our dear Savior lay, they found him in a manger, where oxen feed on hay. His mother Mary kneeling down unto the Lord did pray, O oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy, O oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Now to the Lord sing praises, all you within this place. And with true love and brotherhood, each other now embrace. This holy tide of Christmas, all others doth deface. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Thank you, Pastor Mace. He's helping us today, isn't he? He's doing a good job. Amen. Well, let's see. Let me, um, uh, I don't even know what I'm doing. We're going to sing another song together. So you'll have the words for this. And it's, uh, which one is it? Okay, that's the one I got. Okay, you'll have Hark the Herald Angels Sing. We're going to sing that together so you folks at home will have the words to that. And uh, let's just uh, rear back and sing. Hark the herald angels sing. Let's sing. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. Joyful, O ye nations, rise. Join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the new. Christ by high is heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time, behold him come, offspring of a virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh the Godhead see, held the incarnate deity. Pleased as men with men to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace, hail the Son of Righteousness. Light and life to all he brings, risen with him, lean in his wings. Mount he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die. Born 
to raise the sons of earth, born to give him second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Come desire of nations, come fix in us thy humble home. Rise the woman's conquering sea, bruising us the serpent's head. Adam's likeness now he face, stamp thine image in its place. Second Adam from above, reinstate us in thy love. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Amen. Well, <coughs> excuse me, thank you for singing uh, this morning, and thank you, Pastor Mays, for helping us with the piano today. Let me say this, as we would if, if we were in the house, um, uh, our... Uh, dollar for mission, and here's what I want you to do. I want you to forsake the dollar for mission every year in December. Uh, we do dollar for missions for some of our local uh, folks and local things that's going on, and so we have, we have done some already. Today, our dollar for mission was to be for the Bluefield Union Mission, uh, which we support regularly, but also they at this time of year, they always need extra help and extra things. A lot of demand seems to be anymore. And so, even though you're not in the building, we would ask that you stop by or uh, send in your dollar for mission and your offering. And we thank God for God's goodness through all this pandemic. God has never missed a beat. Amen. And it's through His people that He does that. So if you want to mail yours in, there is a way to give online if you want to try that. Or if you want to just stop by, mail it uh, throughout the week. Uh, we're here and... Uh, Somebody's usually here, and so, uh, but don't forsake the, the mission, and what, what we received this week, we'll see the Bluefield Union Mission gets uh, to help them this time of the year, so uh, praise God, praise God for being able to help, and uh, a lot of missionaries in need, a lot of mission groups in need today, and unfortunately, a lot of churches are forsaking their missions uh, uh, under the umbrella of of pandemic, and I don't think that's right. Uh, we need to trust God, and God will see us through. Well, <clears throat> I got another song to sing. If you're tired of me hearing me sing, well, you get to get tired one more time because I'm going to sing another one. This is a song that uh, I have had in my office for, gosh, I don't know, probably four or five years, and I've never sung it. And I happened to come across it the other day. And I thought, you know, I'm going to try to sing that song. So um, <clears throat> I've not had a lot of practice time. But anyway, and this song <clears throat> is entitled Mary Wrapped a Present. So you listen to the words of this Christmas song. Go ahead. Falling down that night With no place to rest inside Soon she would bring forth a son The end was full but so instead He was born in a stable And there his life had just begun How was she supposed to know As she wrapped him in swaddling clothes That her perfect newborn baby boy Would become a sacrifice He would run and he would laugh and play But his manhood would bring the day When for the world he would choose to die Mary wrapped a present to the world 
On that first Christmas morn When her baby was born Mary wrapped a present to the world There was no lighted Christmas tree Just one bright star so all could see The way to Bethlehem that winter's night The gifts they brought to him But a greater gift she gave to them For through her son would come eternal life Mary wrapped a present to the world On that first Christmas morning When her baby was born Mary wrapped a present to the world Mary wrapped a present to the world On that first gift ever known to man. Amen. The gift of the precious Lamb of God. Well, if your Bible this morning, you have your Bible, and if you're at home, I hope you got your Bible. If you have your Bible, it's church time. Amen. And so I want, I want to, I've been in a series of messages, and I'm going to continue that uh, today, uh, on uh, uh, promises. We could call uh, Christmas, we could call them Christmas promises, I guess, but, but promises that were fulfilled at Christmas. Or, or the title actually is Promises That Christmas Fulfilled or Is Yet to Fulfill. Now today is one we could say that Christmas fulfilled. I want to I give you a message this morning entitled Bethlehem Story. Now I want us to open your Bible to one verse of scripture to the book of Micah chapter number 5. And then we're going to go over to the book of Matthew chapter number 2 and just read a few verses out of both of these as we talk this morning about Bethlehem's story, a, a, a prophecy that was given by the prophet Micah that Christmas would fulfill. And so in the book of Micah, and you know the verse probably, uh, verse number two of Micah chapter number five this morning, and uh, verse number two, the Bible says, But thou Bethlehem Ephetah, Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah. Now notice what it says. Yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Now pay attention to what he's telling. He's introducing you to the place where Christ will be born. He mentions Bethlehem, Ephrathah. And uh, the, uh, though thou be little, we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, this morning in the message entitled Bethlehem Story. I want to read, to read Matthew chapter 2, verse 4, 5, and 6. For here the Bible says, And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, this is the wise men, and they said unto him, in Bethlehem of Judea. For thus it is written by the prophet, and thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Now these, this was the message of the wise men when Herod were to send the wise men. That's a whole different message, but that he's going to send the wise men to find the Christ child, not because he wanted to worship the Christ child, but because he wanted to do away with the Christ child. And you tell me where he's going to be. You know what the wise men said? I'll tell you where he's going to be. Exactly where God said he would be. Amen. 
And God said he would be born in Bethlehem. So this morning, the, 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 the prophecy given by Micah fulfilled on Christmas Day when Christ was born. Bethlehem, let's talk a little bit about Bethlehem. Bethlehem, a small town located five miles south of Jerusalem. Probably the most unlikely place for a king to be born. Amen. Nobody would have picked it if they were to pick a place for a king to be born. It sure would not have been Bethlehem. And it sure would not have been a stable barn. It sure would not have been in a manger of hay. And by the way, he deserved to be in a mansion on top of the greatest, most popular city there was. But he wasn't that way. God sent him to Bethlehem, the most unlikely place for a king to be born. The prophet Micah, and as we read here in 40 simple words, tells the story of this amazing little town. Gives us a lot of things here to think about. And what Mike in just a few words said uh, in his prophecy concerning this place where Christ would be born. But can I tell you this? The story did not just begin at Micah. The story began far beyond the prophecy of Micah. It began in eternity past with the God of heaven. It began way before the prophecy was given. It began with God. Bethlehem should be a place that we hold dear in our hearts today. You are to hold Bethlehem very dear to your heart. We know from the scripture uh, that Christ uh, was born in this little town. And by the way, it's no accident that God chose to bring his son into this world in this little, meager, simple town. God just didn't take a pen and punch it on the map and say it's where he'll be born. You see, God had a purpose. By the way, God has a purpose in everything he does. We don't understand it. Or we don't know what's going on. And we scratch our head and wonder. But I've never known God to scratch his head and wonder about what's going on. You see, and even with Bethlehem, God just didn't uh, pull a name out of a hat and say he'll be born there. God had a purpose and God had a plan and God fulfilled that purpose. Uh, isn't it amazing the workings that God did to work that plan? You go read Luke chapter 2. How are we going to get, I'm, I'm off track, but here we go. Uh, uh, how are we going to get uh, uh, Mary and Joseph uh, to the little town of Bethlehem? Well, we'll just use a pagan king, amen, and we'll get a pagan king to make a decree that'll drive him to Bethlehem. Listen, God's going to win, amen. God's not going to lose this thing. Well, Joseph probably wouldn't just decided to go to Bethlehem for uh, Mary uh, to, to have a child, to be, for this child to be born. Never entered his mind. I said, how are we going to get him there? Well, God says, I'll work the workings around and I'll get him there. And by the way, I'll use the devil to do it. Amen. Bless God. Hey, let me tell you something. Don't ever think the devil's winning because God's going to use the devil to win this thing. Amen. So we ought to praise God today for his workings in our life. So Bethlehem, most unlikely place. We are to hold it dear. It's no accident what God is doing. Bethlehem's story is a story that needs to be told and retold in our society today. But, but I fear, and that's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid the story has become less and less every year. We begin to tell it less and less the more Christmas rolls around. Can I tell you, we live in a day uh, when the talk of Jesus and Christmas is lost amid decorations, lost amid shopping, lost amid Santa Claus, lost amid Rudolph, uh, lost amid Frosty the Snowman, but I'm here to tell you that it's all about the baby and it's all about Christ. Let me tell you, shopping will give you bills you can't pay. Santa Claus cannot save you from your sin and Santa Claus cannot help you, but the baby born in Bethlehem will save you from your sin. We will celebrate Christ. We will celebrate Christ. So I want to give you three things today and I'm going to get out of the way um, about Bethlehem's story. Three things that I think is important that we talk about. This prophecy that was fulfilled there in Bethlehem. Matter of fact, I believe the wise men knew. Amen because they knew what God had said. Can I take just a moment to tell you, to say to the believers today, if you're a Christian, you believe the Bible, God has told you what's going to happen. Amen? God has given us uh, clear instructions what we should be doing and what we should be believing and where we should be looking, even in days such as this. I believe the wise men knew where he was at. 
Herod wanted them to go and see. But they told him. We read where they told him where he was. He's in Bethlehem. Wonder why? Because that's what God said. Amen. Well, they hadn't been there. They hadn't been there to see that baby. But they knew that's where he was. Why? Because that's what God said. Amen. Can I tell you what we're going to, what, what, what we got to do in, in 2020 COVID year? What did God say? Amen. What has God said in his word? Bethlehem's story. And we'll give you three things. Number one, Bethlehem is the story of a place. Bethlehem was and is a real place. Not a fairy tale. It's not something that you read in the scriptures and hope it's there. Bethlehem's a place. Bethlehem means house of bread. Ephrata means place of fruitfulness. No wonder God chose this place. Because look at the meaning of its names. The house of bread and the place of of fruitfulness. No wonder God would bring him to this place for the Bible tells us in the gospel of John that Jesus is the bread of life. He is the bread of life to us. John 6 and 35 and Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life and he that cometh unto me shall never hunger and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. No wonder God pointed it to Bethlehem because it is the place of bread, the house of bread where the bread of life would come into this world. Aren't you glad that Jesus is the only one that can satisfy the hungry soul today. Many souls today are looking and trying to figure out what they're going to do in a dangerous state, in a dangerous time. Many are living hopeless and without hope. But can I tell you, Jesus satisfies the hungry soul. Jesus satisfies the longing soul. Psalm 107 and verse number 9. For he satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with Goodness, that's God, that's Christ. That's why he came. Bethlehem was, was that place of bread, that house of bread, that place of fruitfulness. There's some other things about Bethlehem I think plays an important role when you begin to study the scriptures. For Bethlehem was the burial place of Rachel. You know, Rachel was the wife of Jacob. And when you study that, she dies in childbirth while giving birth to Benjamin. You remember the scripture? She dies while giving birth to Benjamin there. And she will be buried in in Bethlehem. For Genesis 35 and verse 19, And Rachel died and was buried in the way of Ephrata, which is Bethlehem. So we find Rachel buried there. You study the scriptures, you'll also find that Bethlehem was the homeland of Naomi. And not only that, but it was the setting for much of the book of Ruth. When you go study the book of Ruth and you see the makings and the settings there, you see uh, Naomi... uh, uh, was it was from Bethlehem, was the homeland of Naomi. And the, and the book of Ruth, uh, is, much of it is, takes place there in Bethlehem. You go on to study the scripture. Bethlehem was the ancestral home of David. 1 Samuel 17, verse 12, the Bible says, Now David was the son of the Ephratite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse. And he had eight sons. And the man went among the men. For an old man in the days of Saul. You see, it was the ancestral home of David. Some other things you'll find in Scripture. Samuel, if you remember, Samuel would anoint David as the Saul's successor uh, to king. Guess where that take place at? In Bethlehem. 1 Samuel 16. Verse 1, and the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine oil, uh, horn with oil and go, and I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have, anointed, I have provided me a king among his sons. Verse 13, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. You see, it was in Bethlehem that David would be anointed to succeed King Saul as king, you see. 
And then there was something else that I particularly like in the scripture about this place, Bethlehem. David, if you remember David hiding in the cave and he was seeking relief. He was on the run and he was hiding and, and he was in the, in the midst of the battle. David, and, and the men came to him, you remember? And they asked him, what does thou desire? You know what David desired? David desired a drink of water from the well that was in Bethlehem. For 2 Samuel 23, in verse 14 through 16, the Bible says, And David was then in a hold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And the three mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but poured it out unto the Lord. Aren't you glad this morning that Bethlehem is still the relief of many souls? What do you mean, preacher? Well, I mean in Bethlehem was born the Savior of the world. Now it's from Bethlehem that he'll leave and go and, and, and live his life and do the work that God set him to do. He would die on that old ruggy cross and he would pay mine and your sin debt and you and I can gather today in his presence because of what he done for us on the old ruggy cross. So as you celebrate Christmas, Bethlehem must be in the midst of that. You see, for Bethlehem was a place, a real place. Many things took place there. But the greatest of these is the birth of a Savior. Number two, Bethlehem is the story of a plan. God had a plan. Notice back to what Micah said in, in chapter 5 and verse number 2. Notice these words of Micah. For he says, Out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel. Out of thee, you see, God began to lay down the greatest plan in Bethlehem ever known to man. For out of this place is going to come the ruler that's going to rule in Israel. Out of this place will come the King of kings and Lord of lords. For out of thee, Bethlehem, shall he, the Lord Jesus, come forth unto me. That's God the Father. Let me tell you something. God the Father had a plan. God the Father still has a plan. And it involves Bethlehem. And it involves the baby of Bethlehem and it involves you and I that who has met this baby in Bethlehem for out of thee shall come he unto me his name is Jesus Christ and he's going to be ruler and he's going to be the king of kings and lords of lords God laid down this plan and redemption's plan was born in Bethlehem the plan was began in the very beginning Matter of fact, you can go all the way back to the book of Genesis. And in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, the Bible says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. Uh, and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. You see, back in the very beginning, God had redemption's plan. God had a savior of the world and which the devil would tempt and which the devil would try, which the devil would uh, bruise. But let me tell you what, the devil cannot conquer. When he thought he had conquered him in the grave, he overcame the grave. And when he, th he thought he had conquered and won, Christ Jesus came forth to win this battle. The battle's not over, church. We're not finished yet. For he's still the conqueror. And he's still the winner of the battle. Satan may be waving his flag. And Satan may have won in some aspects. But Satan will not win the final battle. For Christ will come forth and win. We must hold on to what the Lord has said. Throughout the Old Testament, reference would point to Messiah Many, well, we, we've studied some already that a Messiah would be virgin born in Bethlehem. Oh, prophecies of his suffering, prophecies of his death, you see, all through the Bible. God had this plan in order before the world ever began. Peter said this, First Peter, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your vain conversation, Received by tradition from your fathers, 
but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained here before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last days for you. God had a plan. Bethlehem was that plan. Bethlehem was the, the story of a plan. You see, for in this meager town, this, this place of bread, this place of fruitfulness, would come a Savior that would become the bread of life, would become the form of fruitfulness. Listen, uh, you, you are uh, the vine and I'm the branches. Amen. You see, He is the vine and we are the branches. You see, from Him we draw our strength. Today, we must draw from the fruitfulness of Christ. If we're going to be fruitful in our Christian walk, it must come from Christ. It must come from this baby born in Bethlehem for you and I today. I thank God today that I am part of His plan. You see, before you and I ever was on the minds of our parents, God had us in his plan. Before you and I ever became a thought, God had us in his plan. You see, for God could look down through the time and see a time when we're going to need some help. He could see a time when we could not redeem ourselves. He can see a time when a Savior must come, but how can he come? He'll come just like everybody else would come. Uh, he'll come through the womb. Of course, it's a virgin womb. He's a sinless lamb of God, but he'll come as a baby born in a manger there in Bethlehem, not in the king's palace, but in the stable barn where the animals were put. And he would be born there. and The prophecy would be fulfilled. And he would go on to live that life so that you and I in 2020, in the midst of pandemic, in the midst of worry, in the midst of fear can look up and know that our Redeemer lives and look up and know that our plan is not in the pandemic our plan is not in the government but our plan is in the Lamb of God who has set all things in order God made his plan, set his plan in order and listen to me his plan will never fail he was born in Bethlehem just like he said wasn't he Go back and read the story in Luke chapter 2. And I've already mentioned it, but it always amazes me how God orchestrates things. Can I say, and this probably won't fall very unpopular ears, but can I say in the day when the pagans seem to be trying to rule the world, you think God can use the pagans to drive his plan? He did, didn't he? You see, Luke chapter 2 went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. You know what Augustus was? He was a pagan king. But you know what he made? He thought he was doing something by issuing a taxation. You know what that taxation said? Everybody's got to go back to their hometown. Hometown for a census to be taxed. Guess where the hometown of Joseph was? Bethlehem. And it was issued just at the time that lo and behold, Mary's going to have a baby at any time and, 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 she, and she can't have it here. Joseph would have never went on his own. God made him go. I'm going to tell you something, church. That will give us something to think about. In the day when things seemed to be going crazy, when things seemed to be going haywire, God still has a plan. Bethlehem was a plan. And it came to fruitation just like he said. I got one more. Bethlehem is the story of a person. The blessed Son of God, Jesus Christ our Lord. His birth was a miracle. We know that. He was born of a virgin. He was born pure and sinless. He was 100% God, yet he was 100% man. He depended on his mother for everything as a baby would. You see, he would get hungry. He'd get thirsty. He'd get tired. He got sleepy. He was rejected. He weeped. Yet in all of that, he lived perfectly sinless. Why? Because he was God in the flesh. John, Gospel of John, chapter 1, 
verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then verse 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Why would God send His, sin, send his Son into a sin-cursed world in the fashion He did? Why? Because He loves you and me. And he, the only way we could have hope was through a Christ child. He wanted to give a ransom for our sins. He came because He cares. He came because He wants to see you saved and in heaven someday. We must share Bethlehem's story. We must. It is something we must as we go about. You know, we're closing in the days of Christmas and we're less than two weeks away from Christmas Day. In the midst of all of this going on, where does Christ fit in? Where does Bethlehem's story fit in for you today? For without Bethlehem, we don't have Christmas. For Christmas is all about Christ. Our world today wants to rearrange that and change that. and You know, we sing the Christmas songs and you know, we sing a lot of Christmas songs. We sing these great songs out in the hymn book and we go and sing other songs and I'm not against them, but, but Christmas is all about Christ. And if we're putting Christ behind the Christmas tree, if we're putting Christ behind Santa Claus, we don't have Christmas. Christmas is about Christ. A prophecy that God set down through the prophet Micah of the place where Christ would be born. Guess what happened? That was the very place Christ was born in Bethlehem, Ephrata. Today, I hope you know Christ as your Savior. Because if you don't, not only can you not celebrate Christmas, you cannot celebrate heaven. For Christ came to seek and to save that which was lost. <clears throat> There's one way to God's heaven today. And that's through the precious blood of this child that came, born in a manger, died on a cross, that we might be saved. Christmas is a wonderful time. If you celebrate it right, it's a great time to remember Christ and be thankful for what Christ has done for us. Today, if you're not saved, I would encourage you to get to know Christ. And boy, how you could celebrate Christmas this year if you just get to know Christ, child. God kept His promise. God will continue to keep His promise. He's promised to come again and receive us under Himself. And that is yet to come, but I believe it's closer by than we may ever, ever dream that this Christ, child, is going to come and gather his people home one of these days. Our Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving us time in the house of God today, time around the Word of God. We ask you, Lord, now to bless this invitation time. If somebody's listening today that's lost, oh, dear God, we pray they'll be saved. I pray for the Christian people to get their focus right, get their heart on the Christ of Christmas, and, Lord, celebrate Christmas with Christ. Have it mean what it's supposed to mean. Lord, bless this in a few moments now. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. As he plays, you folks that are listening today, you have there on the screen a means to get a hold of us if we can help you with your spiritual walk with God. If you want to be saved, you say, Preacher, I don't know how to be saved. Well, you contact us, and we'll take the Bible and show you. We'll take the Bible and show you how you can know you're saved and how you can be part of Christ. You can know this Christ of Christmas. You don't have to spend Christmas without Christ. And you don't have to spend eternity in hell. You can be spend eternity in heaven one of these days. For Christ is going to return. Death will overtake us if we hear here long enough. Eternity comes then. 
What you've done for Christ is all that's going to matter. It doesn't matter what all you have. If you don't have Christ, you don't have anything. So today, if we can help you with that, won't you please reach out to us and let us help you get to know Jesus as your Savior. And you folks that are Christian and you Maranatha people, listen, don't be ashamed to tell Bethlehem's story. Don't be ashamed of the Christ that has saved you. Don't be a carnal Christian. Be a dedicated Christian that serves God, not ashamed of God. Hold your head up high that you belong to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now you listen to what he's playing for a few moments, then I'm going to pray for you. If we can help you, you need to be saved. Our Father, Lord, we thank you, God, for Bethlehem's story. We thank you, God, for Jesus that came, Lord, on Christmas, Lord, and the promise was fulfilled. He was born just like he said he would be there in Bethlehem. And Father, we thank you for your promises that are real. We thank you, God, for the promises you've given us that are yet to be fulfilled. For this same Christ child is going to come and receive us one of these days into his presence. And Lord, I just pray, God, that people be saved. They won't wait too late, Father, for today's the day of salvation. Now is the appointed time. Lord, save our lost people. Give us hearts to pray for people. And Lord, let may we celebrate Christmas this year with Christ in our heart. Thank you again for this opportunity to be here today. For those that's had a way to listen at home and for the means to do that, we thank you, Lord, for providing for us. Bless our service after a while, God, and help us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. house the building will be back open we'll also be live streaming so you can come out for that as well or you can listen at home uh no no master clubs this week so we'll not be having them so keep that in mind as well and then the poinsettias i don't know if you can see them or not but we got several beautiful poinsettias in the building you can still bring yours by and honor in memory of someone if you'd like to we'll have that in the bulletin next sunday and uh with Christmas cards, we're getting them together. We'll try to get them to everyone. Just some things that we're still doing and we'll still take care of. Now, uh, Pastor May, do you have anything you want to say no, for the youth there? Okay. Master Clubs will not meet again until January the 6th, so keep that in mind. Uh, yeah, no youth service. Now, next Sunday, we'll, the building will be open. We'll be meeting back in the house, but we're only going to have two services. We're going to have 11 a.m. service and a 6.30 service. No Sunday school next Sunday. And uh, so we'll do 11 a.m. and 6.30, so keep that in mind. Uh, we will not go back to any youth services until the 27th. Uh, is that correct? The 27th. So we'll go back to Sunday school on the 27th, uh, junior church 27th, except for the teen church. And that's because we're moving our Christmas uh, service. We're going to have a Christmas service on the 20th in the gymnasium. We are moving that to the 27th, uh, even though it's after Christmas, but we'll still have a Christmas spirit going on. And so the folks that's going to sing, the, the, we'll, we'll be able to do the uh, shadow play then with the young people. And, uh, and then we're going to go back and, and we'll have that service in the gym on the 27th at 6.30. So keep that in mind. Having said that, teen church will not go back till the first Sunday in January. And so keep all those things in mind. We're rearranging a few things, but... All things are going well, and we thank God for that. Anything else? No Joy Fellowship. Now, you Joy Fellowship members, we were scheduled to have Joy Fellowship tomorrow at 5 o'clock, but we have canceled that as well. So uh, no, no, no more meetings till Wednesday. 
and uh, we'll be on a regular Bible study meeting, so you can come in the house and join us if you so like, or you can join us by the way of the live stream. Well, we appreciate you being patient with us, helping us, praying for us. You pray for these families in need, and uh, if you need anything, you contact your preacher. You got his number. If you want on the prayer chain, you'll have to send me your number, and I will see that you get put under a lot of announcements come through that. And so if you want on that, if you have a, uh, a device that can get the message, then, uh, and we do post it on our activity page on Facebook. Otherwise, you'll have to call me uh, if you want to know what's going on, okay? Well, God bless you for joining us today. Thank you. Be back this evening at 6.30. I trust you have a good day. God bless you. Thank you. So, hey.